Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. I'm Jennifer Biggs with the Daily Memphian, and this is Sound Bites. Chris Harrington and I are in the studio, and we are going to go over several things today. You can find current and past podcasts of Sound Bites at dailymemphian.com. You can listen to it on WYXR 91.7, your Crosstown Radio, at 11 a.m. on Thursdays. You can find my food and dining stories and Chris's food and dining stories and his Grizzly stories at DailyMemphian.com and join our Table Talk group on the Daily Memphians Facebook page. Chris, hello. Hey, Jennifer. You you you, you survived. You, you, you didn't burn your house down. You didn't... Your your power still working. Everything's going going well for you after after your culinary experience last night. Well, not as well as you might think. Oh, okay, the house still stands. That's true. And uh, yeah, I have power, but I honestly think that I might have run my stove. So if y'all, if any, if you were listening last week, I made a promise that I was going to fry chicken again. We realized last night when I was trying to figure out how long ago it was since I last fried chicken. Right. My grandmother was alive, and she's been dead 19 years. Oh, so wow. it, was, it was at least that long ago. And it, you know, it could have been any time prior to, I mean, 19 years ago, 22 years ago. Who who can say for sure? It's been so, a long time. So I have fried chicken more recently than you, but I would I would still count in terms of years for me. Well, here's what I found out. That when someone says, here's a good recipe, just do it instead of, oh, why would I think the last time I did this, and honestly, I blew every fuse in my house and fed people raw chicken. And, you know, it was such it was such an event because we had people who spoke four languages in for dinner. So we had to have when I saw Mr. Wu, who was um, an in-law in-law staying at our house, biting into a piece of chicken that turned out to be pink. The outside of the chicken looked great, but you, the temperature kept falling because the fuses kept blowing, and I didn't realize what was going on. This was years ago. I didn't do this last night. Last night, everything had a thermometer. Everything was cooked through. But for it, for it to get to him, I would have to say in English to my brother-in-law, who would then have to translate to his wife in Japanese, who would then have to translate to her parents in Chinese. Oh, wow. Don't eat that. <laughs> so, you know, there it was. I feel like there's got to be some sign language component yeah, to, to, yeah, to, to would, communicate that. You would think just no would be right. enough, but it was um, that was an experience. Last night was not that bad. The chicken was good. I still have so far to go. I'm going to post a picture of it somewhere. So I got when, when dark one wants- spot. When one wants to fry their own chicken, you got a few different decisions to make. The chicken itself, you know, whole pieces, what kind of pieces, whatever. The method of, you know, battering or dredging or, or whatever you're doing there. And then what you're actually cooking it in. Like, what are you, what, so how did you, you know, this is a choose your own adventure that has multiple destinations. Where did you go with it? It is. And so I went with drumsticks, thighs, breasts, and some wings. Whole pieces. Th- those were, mm-hmm. you get the, so, all, 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 put them all, all, all of them. Thing. That's right. And, and I divided the breasts because of course they look like they come from turkeys instead of chickens these days. They were huge. So I cut, I cut one I actually cut in three pieces. It was so big. The other one, I just cut it crosswise. Um, and I decided to go with a batter because Gus's uses a batter But I read something on Serious Eats. Somebody said, yeah, this is the best fried chicken. And it really did look good. And it was it was breading. But I took another recipe with the batter. But I all but so what I did, I took Kenji's from Serious Eats. I took from Serious Eats. I took his brine, which was a buttermilk brine, spice mix, let the chicken sit in the refrigerator and that all day. But then I took the batter from America's Test Kitchen and then sort of, I mean, I I followed it a little bit, but then when a friend of mine got there, he said, this doesn't look thick enough. You know, when I do a batter, it's thicker. So then we started adjusting it a little bit more. 
what I should have done is just followed the recipe on serious eats. And that's what I'm going to do next time. It looks good. You should look at some of the fried chicken, by the way, on Table Talk. There's a frequent contributor to Table Talk named Tim Pierce, and he's got some fried chicken he made this weekend. Fabulous. So when I fry chicken, I've not done a batter. Um, what? How is a batter for fried chicken different than, say, a pancake batter? This Well, by the time that we ended up adding more to it, it was denser. than When I made it, it was about like a pancake batter. It was a, almost exactly what it was like. Just like, you know, a good, where you, you know, you want to put it out. You don't want the pan, depending on how thick you want it. Now, right. by the time um, we added more flour and more cornstarch, it thickened up to where it was. Did you watch the video of um, when Ron Trim and I were making the corn dogs? Yeah. It was more like that. It was okay. that kind of thick, like like hush puppy thick instead. So there was a lot more to it and a lot less draining from the, you know, having to, before I'd have to hold the chicken above the, the pan and let it, the liquid kind of go back in. I had another problem. I used an electric skillet. Yes, what I did about that. But it was a square electric skillet. So I used a, you know, maybe like a 12 by 12 electric skillet. Should have been bigger because by the first time I put five or six pieces of chicken in, temperature went right. way down. And it, it was okay. It kept bubbling, but it wasn't ideal. Ideally, you get it to 350, you put it in, and you get it back to 300 to 325, and you fry it at that Turn it once. You don't want the crumbs, the crust falling off. Uh, and then, you know, all sounds so simple. Not for me. It was not that simple. In fact, the first batch, was before I put uh, more flour in the batter, when I started to turn it, I had one big piece of chicken because everything, all the, fried the, the batter had fried together. Yeah. yeah and, and, but you couldn't see it from the top. It was all like at the bottom where it had gotten under. So I had to get, I got some kitchen shears and I had to cut them apart. And, this is and a problem I've had it. doing catfish on my little like tabletop deep fryer. But like when I You've did fried- had that too, where it'll fry together like yeah. that? Yeah, when when I did fried chicken, it's been a few years. I did a cast iron skillet, like you know, on 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 the stovetop, which is another you know, it's not that much space. I have a big cast iron skillet, but in terms of depth and width, it's really not that big for right. something as substantial as fried chicken. But I feel like you showed me the picture when we came in. I feel like even cutting the breasts up, the pieces are too big. I think I think to to do that's sort of where I struggle with it because I have a friend who's they a really are. good cook. And 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 he makes fried chicken, and I finally asked him about it, and he said, "Well, I don't, I don't, I, I do boneless thighs, and I'm sure that's good, but to me, that's not real fried chicken." No, it's not. I, I completely agree with that, and they're fine, and they're good for making a sandwich, but it's not the same as fried chicken. Right, totally different thing. And these are, I think, ideally, I would buy like an organic chicken and cut it up myself. You get the right size piece because you're getting the right size chicken when you do that. You're not, you know, these pieces are huge. This was, you know, whatever, Sanderson Farm, something like that. Something I bought at the grocery. They were already cut in pieces. They came in, you know, thighs, legs, and wings in one package. And then I bought a package of breasts to do them too. So it, that it was not exceptional chicken. It, that would be the next. The first thing I'll do next time is. I'm going to follow the recipe, probably Kenji's recipe, and I'm going to cut the chicken up myself, and I'm going to buy a um, a, a reasonable size chicken, like an under four pound chicken. What kind of oil did you use? I just used vegetable oil, okay. which was perfectly fine. And what did you do with it after you were done? Well, I I threw it out. Now there was a whole, there was a big thing about no, just drain it, use it next time. It's perfectly fine. You can drain it and use it next time. I didn't feel like there was enough left. I didn't deep fry, so it wasn't well, like a and, deep fry. And, and how long until there's a next time? That's one of my problems. Yeah, with so, the idea of keeping keeping grease. Yeah, we, it was cool. We got out a baggie I, before I did all this. By the way, I lined my um, uh, cat my countertop with. Uh, newspapers because I get the New York Times I have a ton of them you know still in the blue bags so I had plenty lined it thick so that I wouldn't have grease all over the countertop it, because it would have it splattered that's a good like pro crazy yeah. yeah yeah that was it was a good idea that was something I did that was that was a good thing that did last night good tip so I took we took the grease I took the pa- the newspapers wad them up 
put them in a Ziploc bag, a gallon size Ziploc bag, then poured the grease in it. So the newspaper kind of absorbed it and then took it out because trash was coming a day late. So it was good. Don't tell me I'm not supposed to throw it away. If any, if any I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the rule, I don't know what the rules are on that stuff. That, 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 that is actually one of the reasons I've stopped deep frying or doing heavy frying. It's because dealing with the aftermath of it to me is 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 as much of a chore as the cooking itself. And oh, so, I agree. Yeah. And so I don't know if you want to be ready to segue off the chicken or not, but I got a segue sure. for you. Well, so, let's segue. So, let's so go. You, so. We just talked about you home cooked something that I that you know historically is home cooking. We all both grew up with fried chicken as home cooking, but you home cooked something that I now think of as go out and get it. Oh, me not too. home cooking. But you also wrote this week about something about going out to eat somewhere that a lot of people see it as going out food. I think of primarily for me personally as, as cooking home food, and that's steak. So side porch steakhouse. Well. Side porch steakhouse. Okay, here's. I don't go out and eat steak very often. I know you haven't been to Folks Folly. We've yeah, already talked about. Yeah. I never have. I ever. This is how I I feel about eating a steak out. I'm never going to order a steak on the menu at a restaurant that isn't a steakhouse. It's not a steakhouse, right? Right. And I'm only going to go to a steakhouse if it is some sort of occasion where somebody wants to go to Folks Folly or the Capitol Grill. It's some really expensive place that that's what. Somebody wants to do. I'm not going to pick a place like this that. This is an interesting point because, like, if you go to a high end restaurant, no matter whether it's like a high end Italian, like you know, an Andrew Michael or whatever, or a high end more New Orleansy place, or mm-hmm. a high end what, like almost any kind of high end restaurant you go to, whatever the orientation is, there's, there's going to be a steak on the menu probably. Do I don't ever, order it either. Oh me either. Yeah. No steak. I can cook. I can cook a good right. steak. I mean, I can actually can cook most things. I'm sounding like I don't know how to cook, which is not true. I just feel like I need to know how as a food writer in the south i need to know how to fry chicken so that's why i'm doing this this is no other no other well, real I'm, reason I'm, but i'm jealous you, you're here taunting me in my lack of a kitchen again well you soon you'll have a kitchen yeah. and we'll, then we'll have a fried chicken cook-off All right. that, we'll may, have that, a, that a may be that may be what, what will get me get me to try it well again. yeah and me too maybe that'll keep me going i'm gonna have to remember the newspaper it. technique because my wife will kill me if there's grease spots everywhere and listen mine are new countertops too that was you know the old ones i probably wouldn't even have thought about that but i just thought oh i'm gonna have to clean these things so that was what it was and i have plenty of newspapers don't worry uh so the steak at side porch here's the difference with the steak at side porch and the steak at capitol grill or bucks volley or fleming's or wherever this is not prime beef. Right. So for $24, you can get, you know, an eight ounce filet, a baked potato, and a salad. Or for $28, a 12 ounce filet, something like that. You get your you get your whole meal for that. And it is certainly something that almost everybody is gonna say, this is fine. And I will tell you, it's, it's not it's, it's not, not prime it's beef. It's fine to me. I don't need I don't need every I mean, when I'm cooking steak at home, it's not like, you know. The finest prime aged whatever. I mean, I'm buying good steaks, but it's not, you know. And choices. Choice is usually yeah. what we get because really you can't find prime at very many places. So you can go to a prime shop and it's very expensive. Sometimes Costco has prime. And if I see prime at Costco, I usually buy it. But for the most part, if I'm cooking at home, I'm also cooking choice. So that's right. that's what most people are doing. But And I don't know what this was. I don't know if it was choice. I don't, I'm, I'm sure... It, it I, yeah, I think it was choice. I don't think it was select. But anyway, the steak I had, I had a fillet, and I can tell you that that fillet was as tender as any fillet I've ever cooked or I've ever tasted anywhere. It was really good. It was the the old fashioned bacon wrapped, which I I used to hate having the bacon around my right. Because it was always flabby bacon. It was just never done right. But this one was kind of already pulled off, so it was a crisp little piece of bacon on the plate. If you Wanted it to be a treat. You know, it was. It didn't have the toothpick still sticking in there. Um, and there was a marinade. They they marinate their steaks at Side Porch. Don't really like marinated steaks. But this was not over-marinated. This just had a nice flavor. It used to be over-marinated it, with the previous owner. It was just, it was hard to do. I don't, this, this is definitely, we, we could talk about a few different things in terms of steak preferences. I don't, I'm with you on the marinade thing. Like when we go visit my mother in Arkansas, uh, her husband always marinates the steaks that he cooks. And like, I mean, I'll eat it. It's fine. But if you have a, a halfway decent piece of meat, like just like some 
some kosher salt and some fresh cracked pepper that's and right. like maybe a little bit of garlic, but like like that's that's it. That's all you need. And and plenty of salt. That's one yes, thing people yes, forget. You gotta really put that salt on there. Yeah. And if you wanna put a little butter on it afterwards, I'm okay with that. But right. I don't usually do that either. It's usually fine just when it comes off the uh off the grill or even better. The cast iron skillet, which is my favorite way to cook a steak, is you know sear on top and then put in the oven. Now that good. will set in my house. I, I like that method too. I prefer that method to the grill. That will set off the smoke alarm every time. Oh it, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we did not set off a smoke alarm last night. That's one thing that didn't happen. We did the fuse box blew. Actually, it didn't blow. Had to turn it off to turn off whatever was going on with the oven, which has never done this. I don't know. I've said before, I ended up getting a new kitchen. The first, that last time I fried chicken, everything got gutted and remodeled. This time, I, I felt, to I, get I, a stove. I felt I got smart and I started taking the smoke alarm down and moving it to the other end of the house whenever I would I would I would make steaks in the house. Because it, it smoke for me, it really smokes up. Because you, you get it the does. cast iron really, really hot you do? right before you, th- you right? pop the steak in there. But I do, I agree. I do it there, and then I'll pop it in the oven and the, under the broiler to finish it. The one well, you see, I don't put mine in. I put it in a hot oven, but I don't put it in the broil. Do you not? Okay. I put it like, but I put it up to you know, whatever the maximum five hundred five fifty, but it on bake. Well, when so I think, I think people think of steaks as a grilling thing, mm-hmm. but when I think of like the best steak I've ever had in my life, and partly maybe this is the total experience of eating and not just the steak itself, I've never been to the world's greatest steakhouses, except I've been to Doe's Eat Place in Greenville, Mississippi, <laughs> which is one of the gr- world's greatest steakhouses. I would houses. say so, for sure. And those are broiled steaks. Are they? Yeah. I didn't know that you they st- I mean, it's them. been a yeah. few years since I've been down there, but I mean, you open the door, you step in the door, and you look to your left, and there's the steaks on the broiler right there, like right inside the door. When you walk in, I haven't. I, I the last time I was in Greenville, I did need it at Doe's. No, I don't. I doubt that if they've remodeled. I bet you still go in through. I do remember the kitchen, but I don't remember. You you wind your watching. way through the little kitchen where they're yeah. cooking the French fries and making the right. salads until you get to your table. I remember yeah. that salad dressing too. For some oh, reason, that, that, that lemony iceberg that's so good. And you know, all it is is half lemon juice and half um, half a vegetable oil or Probably. salad oil. I yeah. think that's what she told me it was, but yeah. it's just vegetable oil. Anyway, Surely, I didn't mean to sidetrack know, to talk about one steak okay. place to another. But my other but question for you on steak preferences: you, So you went with the fillet? Is that is that your the way you no. go? Filet is not. Guy. I am a ribeye guy too. Yeah. I, I am, but we did get a ribeye also. So okay. two of us were eating. The filet was better than the ribeye was. The ribeye, was, the ribeye was fine, but the filet was exceptionally good. That's why I was mentioning that. And a filet is something that now I will cook a filet. I like it, it's so easy to cook. You can't do anything wrong to a filet except overcook it. There's really not anything else to do to it. I mean, you don't have to look inside of a filet and see if you need to clean it out, if there's anything, any like little pieces that need to come out. And sometimes with the ribeye, you do. My favorite, and I'm going to just remind you, don't let me forget to tell you why my oven was on last night, because this is important with chicken. <laughs> we got to come back to that part okay. of it. But the wh- this is why the whole uh, thing happened. But the... Uh, I like the ribeye cap. In fact, if it, it is to me the best part. Now you will every now and again find the only place I've ever seen it. Well, I've seen it on the menu at Gray Canary. They call it spinalis, and it's really good. But they will roll it so you've got a piece about I don't know, you know, no more than an inch thick that stretches around the cap of the ribeye. So it's no more say. The biggest piece that I could think of would be like an inch thick and maybe ah, four to five inches long, maybe something like that. So it's a small piece of meat, but it's it's tender and it has a lot of flavor because it's ribeye. But they'll take a lot of those pieces and kind of form them into a steak. And it's called, I can't remember what it's called. They call it something. It's hard to find. Every now and again, you'll see it at Costco. It's expensive, but it if you see it, you should get it and you should cook it because it's delicious. Medium rare is your standard order? I mean, it'll just slightly – at home, medium rare. If I'm in a restaurant, I'll usually ask them to go slightly below medium rare because they oh, usually – below medium rare? Because usually they won't give you a real medium rare. That'll right? give me a medium rare, yeah. right, if I ask for below. 
Um, I've never been to Side Porch Steakhouse. You, you, I, your piece makes me want to go. I'm, I'm pro I Bartlett in general. Yeah, no. Um, I, I, it sounds great, like a fun place to go. Great family place. Take the kids. So the croutons, the croutons are the signature here? The croutons are fantastic. So they're the dinner rolls, which are just like, you know, some kind of like a like a, a buttery roll that has a little bit of sweetness in it. They're small. So when they make the crouton... It's possibly quartered. I would say that they're halved. I would say that they're just sliced down the middle. Now, I could be wrong, and that could be quartered, but I d- we didn't have rolls with the dinner. We just had croutons this time, right. but I've had the rolls there before. These are better. They quit using so the croutons margarine. are not just on the salad. They just come out. And oh, yeah. It's like breadsticks or something. Yes. Yeah. They just come out before the meal. They bring you a basket of them. When you want more, you just say... I need more croutons, and they'll bring uh, we, you more okay. croutons. Okay, we, we do have to make a family trip because my son would just be all all about that. So he, yeah, he likes he would a good love crouton. It. And they he have, does not like when I make fun of him for liking croutons, and I, I say it in French. Crouton. <laughs> you <laughs> like some more croutons? <laughs> yeah. This is why. You're embarrassing right. your son. Yeah. He's saying, I'm oh, my dad. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I, well, Megan and Chloe both will – They'll just eat a bag of croutons. Right. I always have croutons in my house. Just the Texas, whatever, the New York, New York Bagel Company, right. Texas style croutons. So what percentage of people going to side porch steakhouse would you say are ordering steak? I assume there's, I mean, there is, I've looked at the menu. There is other stuff. But. Yeah, there's, there's chicken and there's shrimp. I got the little shrimp and um, steak. You know, I got it together. They're a little surf and turf. Um I would say that the percentage of people, uh, very close to 100%. Okay. I mean, so. I, I would say it's by far the, the main thing that's being ordered. I've had chicken there before. I got chicken there a few years ago. Um, but again, the marinade is on everything. And it's very evident on the chicken. But you can ask for it not to be on there. If you, it's a nice marinade. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything about it that doesn't taste good. It's just that whether you like it on your meat Again, the new owners use it more sparingly than the former owner did. So Now, did you ask for no marinade, or were you asked for a preference? No, no. Nobody said anything. I just took my steak as it came. But oh, okay. when I was talking to one of the owners afterwards, and um, <clears throat> I was telling her, you know, that I do, after the story ran, and um, I told her that I'd really had, you know, I really did enjoy it, and that I would come back back for sure and that one of the things i liked was that the steak wasn't as heavily marinated as it had been before that i didn't like marinated steaks and she said oh you don't have to have it marinated at all if you don't want it just say so and we'll cook you an okay. marinated that's, steak. A, that's a good pro tip um yeah. um reservations required reservations um encouraged if you, they well right now if you, it's best to say required because if you can go in if they had we had some walk-ins the night we were there they'll give you a seat if they have one but don't count on them having one and they're brand new and, and when i say brand new not only have they just opened they've also never been in the restaurant business so they need they want to know they need to know how to staff the kitchen they need to know how to staff the restaurant so they want people making reservations and which you can do through their facebook page and right. of course they're easy to find on facebook side porch steakhouse Bartlett, Tennessee. Bartlett, Tennessee. Shout out. There you go. So, <laughs> so did you what did you do? Did you go to Bartlett? I thought you were a White Station kid here. No, I am a White Station kid. I, I spent a lot of time, not so much lately, but before I had kids, I spent a lot of time going to the movies at the uh, the Malco Bartlett, the the cheap That's the, right. the second the, run or whatever cheap theater out there. Also, back when I played tennis, which I haven't done in like 10 years, that's where we would go a lot was the, the whatever the public park is out there with all the tennis courts. Yeah, you know, I was talking to someone the other day. Uh, it, he was telling me about playing tennis, and I said, where do you play? And he said, I, I can't tell you, because the problem is— You don't want other people showing up. Well, he There's said— There's not that many places to go where just walk up and play. That's what he said. He said, I played yeah. at the Racket Club, and they tore it down. Then I went to Leftwich, and they tore it down. Right. And if you ever told anybody where I was playing, they'd tear it down, and people would be after See, you. See, both, both tennis and basketball, the two things I used to do I don't do anymore. I like to just show up to public places and like play outside, and not. I don't like, like being a member of something or whatever. Anyway, but Barley, anyway, you can go get a steak. You don't even have to play tennis. You don't have to, but it's <laughs> nice to know you can. Right. I will say it does feel. I mean, it was very small town feeling when yeah. we when we pulled in, went, went down Bartlett Boulevard to you know, get to the Subport Steakhouse, and there were um, 
I guess it was softball. I don't know. It's not baseball season yet, is it? I mean, it would be it's, early, it's, but it's spring training season. Yeah, you know, they had all the lights yeah. on, lots of cars around, you know, kids out playing on the field. And um, then we get there, and there's a train that has stopped and in the middle of, you know, the old town part of Bartlett and tr- causing all this congestion. And, and, of course, made everyone end up showing up at the same time for their reservations, too. But but it does feel a little, yeah, it, it feels like you've left the city. And Well, well I mean, another place you will need reservations, although not quite yet, is uh, Restaurant Iris. I am so excited about this restaurant opening, and not just because it's going to be so close to me, and it will be, and it's just going to be down the street. I right. like that, but I, I it's not love, that close to you. It's in East Memphis, but it's it's more the western end of East Memphis. It's like just this. this it is absolutely it is one and a half miles from my house oh is it really okay yeah no it's and the reason i know that and it's five minutes well, that's true it, the thing is i think of highland and then like that perkins area it's like you know there's the two major streets but there's like 20 miles between, between well, those two streets that's just true. About. yeah it's a but long I, it's a long stretch i know that it's five minutes from my house because yeah. when jim's place opened on perkins right across the street from this i am times the old Jim's place where nobody would go out summer, that beautiful place, you know, out with all the azaleas yep. and the all the antiques, that fantastic house. It took me six minutes to get there and it took me five minutes to get to the other one. So my house was just in the middle of each of them. So we're talking about Iris because yeah. you, I believe, broke the news this week. So we did. First to write about it. Um, uh, they have a new, is executive chef the right word? Yes, that is the word. And that's Russell Casey, most known for being the chef at Bounty, which is where he's been for the, he was there almost six years before he left. And Kelly called him right after uh, he got the the lease for, um, for Laurelwood signed and said, um, Will you come? We'd be my executive chef. And they both really kept it good and secret until a few weeks ago. And when I heard about it, and then they were still kind of waiting to work some details out. But Russell's been working for him since the first of the year. And there, here's what is exciting to me. First of all, I, I think they're going to be a great team. But what we're going to get is a real New Orleans-style restaurant you can follow you can go to the anywhere on social media where restaurant hours has got a presence you can see this huge skylight in the middle of what was the grove grill forever but it had a drop ceiling no one even knew it was there i don't even know why it was put there i mean it was it was a cafeteria before it was grove grill been meaning to look it up to see if it was a morrison's or britland's and i haven't looked it up but i'm pretty sure it was one or the other they were the big cafeterias around here and the, and that's why it has all that food service, that big basement full of, you know, kitchens and equipment. We're going to have a place kind of like a, a Galatois or an Antoine, something. But a restaurant where you can go in, where, you know, you've got your prom seating. If you want to people watch or if you want people to watch you, you're going to be able to sit in the middle. You're going to be able to have private seating if that's what you want. You're going to have an oyster bar if that's what you want. There'll be a jazz brunch if that's what you want. Um, It's going to, there's going to be music. Of course, all the grab and go, all this. I feel like I'm I'm pushing this right now, and that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just really excited about it because I love those old New Orleans restaurants. See, I have actually never been. I've been to New Orleans many times, eaten New Orleans many times. I've never gone to any of those big old school, like those specific places you mentioned. I've never been to any of those. I've never you, been to what's what's the place in the Garden District? Um, that Commander's Palace. Yeah, I've never been there. I've never been to Galatoire's. Never been to you know any of those really. I've never done the Friday lunch. I've been to some po' boy shops, but like, well, like the upscale places, I have not been to. We used to go so often to New Orleans because we'd go five or six times a year. Right. This is back pre-Katrina. You could just say, let's go to New Orleans and you know get a hotel for almost a nice hotel. I mean, you get the Ritz-Carlton for like $100 a night or something. You could always get a deal in New Orleans. And we just go down for you know, a few days and, and eat and walk and have, um, you know, have a, a lot of fun. And we'd always try... The -the out-of-the-way restaurants, the new things that we wanted to, but we'd always also go to one of the old ones, whatever we could get in, because it was usually last minute. So sometimes, like sometimes we've been to Antoine's more than once. 
But it's fun. Antoine's is, is fun. There's a story that I, I can't, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but it involved Michael Donahue was there at the same time that uh, Bob and I were there. And so Michael and his friend Bubba and um, Bob and I all met for dinner. And there, it, there were many martinis and uh, a baked Alaska and all sorts of fun things. And we ended up getting a tour of of Antoine's and dancing in a third floor, a third floor ballroom that had been closed for, it hadn't been used for you know, years and years and years, decades. And it was just, you know, a really special thing to, to get to see and to, to get that tour. And I, I hope that whoever took us on that tour was well compensated for that. I hope somebody managed to, to slip him some money. So we have not seen a menu yet for, for the new Iris. We Are not. we anticipating, yeah, they'll have sort of those New Orleans classics that, you know, you associate with those restaurants, but probably also veer in ways that are complimentary, but also not, you know, you may see, you know, Russell Casey's own kind of approach to some stuff. If you think well, about the food you had at Bounty on Broad, a lot of that was sort of Southern in a way, but not explicitly New it Orleans. Was. You know, of course, when Russell went to Bounty, they, remember that Bounty is a gluten-free restaurant, so there were some limitations on that. Russell's a fantastic cook. Um, a oh, we, little, we, we went several times yeah. when he was there at Bounty. We always really enjoyed the He's, food. Yeah. I think he was the best chef at Bounty. Well, I haven't been and haven't tried the new chef, so I'm not including uh, Andrew Armstrong is there now, and I haven't been yet. But I think that um, even though it was sort of created as a vehicle for Jackson Kramer, I just think that Russell really took it to another level. And it, it, a lot of it was, these were Jackson's recipes. So um, we'll have to see exactly what Russell right. creates on his own when he gets here. And of course it's going to have, and he, he did some, he did some stodging in uh, New Orleans. So he has some experience with that and he, he can do, you know, fine cooking, but he can also do, you know, the casual family style stuff that, he can cook whatever. He's right. a good chef. And in fact, do you know who um, who always asks him to cook for him when he comes to town is Jackson Brown. And uh, the last time I saw Russell before I saw him for this interview was um, we were all at the Paramount and he was getting ready to go to the Jackson Brown concert and said, yeah, he just called me and said, I've got tickets. And um, hey, I've got four tickets for you right down in front. So he was there. um what ready to go and jackson brown has a cookie company i, I don't know if anyone knows this i didn't know this. should have a brownie company well he should but it's cookies it's ginger cookies right and so after um russell sent you know got some greens to him the first time this happened a few years ago jackson brown sent him a bag of cookies that he and his cousin or brother or somebody that it's their line of cookies and then Russell wouldn't eat them because he said these are Jackson Brown's cookies. They're going to sit. They they have to sit here. We have to have them forever. And finally, he broke down and ate them, but they were stale because it was like a year or two later. So I think he was getting more cookies though. All right, Jackson Brown cookies. There you go. Yeah. Um. So we'll look oh, forward to well, that. Yeah. Well, no, that's going to be great. I wanted to go back and tell you real quickly why I had the oven on. And to, and people, if you know anything about this, feel free to tell me if this is right or wrong. One of the things I read it, reading about fried chicken was if you really, there's two two things. If you want really crispy chicken, you will put, you'll take it out of the fryer and put it on a, um, just like a cookie sheet with a rack on it, put it in the oven for about 10 minutes and let the, the crust get crustier. That's one thing. So that's what the oven was on for. And it stayed on what forever. 400. Okay. And it stayed. And I just wonder if I let it sit in there with nothing in it too long that I just really messed it up because it was taking forever for the chicken to get done. Right. Much longer than I thought it would. And then if you run it super, You think that super, would mess up an oven just to have it be turned on for a while? No, I wouldn't think so. No. Okay. I mean, it goes, it does self-cleaning where it gets up to like 900 degrees right. and that doesn't do it. So right. I don't know what happened. I do, I'm just hoping it works tonight and I don't ever have to worry about it again. Um, 
on, and then if you want it super crunchy, you put it in the refrigerator at least one hour, and before you serve it, you um, you pop it back into 350 degrees and give it a quick fry, just like you would do for French fries if you wanted really good French fries. Yeah, I'm not trying to do that. Well, that's what <laughs> I said. This is These are all the things. I believe and in the technique. I will not be pursuing that it, technique. Well, it sounded like an awful lot of trouble, and I didn't, I didn't do the second fry. You know what's not too bad? What? Cold fried chicken. No, you're right. Cold fried chicken is good. And that's one of the things that uh, I think, I think Kenji, somebody said in their, you know, when they were telling how to cook it, said, whatever you have left over, don't worry, serve it hot, do it room temperature, do it cold. It's all good. It's fried chicken. But anyway, we've talked enough about fried chicken. Um, what else? What do we have coming up? Um this week we had well today I went to that new little Mexican restaurant at Poplar and Bay Minute Park and Menden Hall that's only been open uh, it's been open less than a month and um, they serve here's what I've what I've decided I didn't eat the breakfast I should have because I just think it should be known for its breakfast that's a good point since it's it's a former a it's a building that had been a that's CK's right. coffee shop. And they have a good breakfast menu. Yeah, you, I made it. I made, you walk it, I made the door a mistake. Immediately wanting hash browns. Well, you know, I made a mistake. That's all I know. The food was good, but I did make a mistake. I should have said, "I need break. I need eggs. I need, I'm going to need some eggs and and some coffee." That's what I should have had instead. Instead, we did lunch, and, and it was good. But um, I'm going back for breakfast for sure. Eggs and cactus. What do you think? I don't know that I've had. Have I had cactus? I don't know that I've had cactus. You've probably eaten cactus if you've ever had the mocha yeti. Right. The bowl uh, that has all the different stuff in it. You know what I'm talking about? I do, yeah. but I don't think I've ever ordered one of those. It seems it seems like it seems too much. It is too much. Yeah. But there's always cactus in it. There's right. everything in it. But it, cactus is fine. It's a little bit um I mean, I know that you also love okra, but this is more like boiled okra right. than it is. It has a little bit of the sliminess, is right. what I'm saying. But it's not it doesn't have to. I guess there's a way to prepare it where it doesn't but sometimes it does. I suspect what they're doing here, though, is they're like grilling them you know, more like steaks. Right. So you're cutting into it and probably wouldn't be a slimy. I don't know that. I'm just guessing it. Um. Well, we are, I guess, I, I think we've said everything that we need to say this week, except that um, I can't wait for your kitchen to be done either, because that's going to inspire me to get back in and fry some more chicken as soon I, as you fry yours. I'm going to be cooking up a storm at the first opportunity. I really am. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm itching. I'm itching to be cooking. I'm itching to be getting out to farmers markets and buying stuff to cook, and, and get away from my 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 um, grilled cheeses and, and 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 pancakes and other things I'm doing on an electric griddle, sitting on top of the sideboard in my dining room. Right well, now. you should at least come by the house and get the bag of leftover fried chicken. Do you, you, you have anything to heat it in? A you microwave. Have a microwave. But that's not, that's not no, you wouldn't do that. No, that's yes. right. A toaster oven's actually a good thing to have. It is. We don't have one. I don't think we're going to have one in the new kitchen. Either. Nah, no, you don't well. need. I had one because I have it in the apartment. Uh, but I do think that they are handy to have. A uh, toaster oven is definitely, if you've got the counter space for it, something that you know it's great for do, for making toast. It's great for just doing small little things. Um, okay, Chris, I will see you. Thanks, next Jennifer. Week. In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.